Hey, welcome back to Test Hack. I'm Mr. White, this AP Human Geography exam review guide. It's gonna get you through that test in May and you're gonna get a three, four, five guaranteed or you get to watch this free YouTube video again. All right, today we're gonna to be looking at our sixth topic. That's demographic transition model. And it's these things you see, the, the onion and these lines look like you know, bad hospital sounds. So today we'll see what is going on with these. So we have to first think the word demographic means the study of humans. So if we look at humans, we see that there weren't that many of us until fairly recently. And now there's a lot of us. It's a simple, oversimplified way of saying it. So why have we grown at such a steady rate and then all of a sudden such an explosive rate more recently? That's what we're going to hope to describe today. So let's look every time we hit a major milestone. You can see on the right column you have the population, in the center column the year, and how many years are between it. So what you'll notice first is 10,000 BC is the Neolithic Revolution or the Agricultural Revolution where people realize how to plant plants. I know it sounds crazy. Someone had to realize that if you put seeds down, that same plant will continue to grow there and you don't have to wander around and forage for it. So that leads to population growth. There's a more steady food source. People don't have to walk as much. They can live longer, more relaxing. The year 1800 is also important because the Industrial Revolution started that year. So now everything's being produced in mass. There's mechanization, machinery, and we hit that 1 billion. And if you look along now, to go from 1 to 2, 130 years, 2 to 3, 30, 3 to 4. So you'll see it just it takes less and less time to get a billion people. And that's indicative of better health care and better food. So let's look at those factors, right? The top left in the red, you have the medical factors. It begins in the 50s with vaccines and antibiotics and insecticides, things that stop malaria, and, um, uh, cholera, and all of these diseases. It diffuses from the core to the semi-periphery and periphery, and it's still spreading today. In the green in the top right, you have agriculture. This is probably the biggest because can't grow if you don't eat. My son knows that, right? So the Neolithic Revolution was about twelve to 14,000 years ago. People switched from hunting and gathering and start farming. Um, not super efficient, but a, a massive upgrade. They also um, will start to domesticate animals. In the bottom, we have the technology. And the Industrial Revolution is so key to that. We see that the steam engine produces... Uh, we have all these innovations with factory mass production, just tremendous amount of growth. And now we have more, more work being done by machines and less work being done by humans. So if you add all these together, right, medicine, food, and machinery, you have ding, 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 a lower child uh, death rate. So let's first talk about how to read these population pyramids. It's basically a representation of a country's population, and it splits into three parts. You have the young, which is 0 to 15. Some of y'all are in that. The working age, 16 to 65. If you're that age and don't have a job, guess what? Get on it. And then there's 65 and up, the golden years, also don't work. So you'll notice two of these groups do not contribute to the economy, and one contributes massively to it. I always tell my students, when things are too old or too young or too hot or too cold, always think of this Goldilocks. So if there's too many babies in a country, that's bad. Conversely, if there's too many old people in a country, also bad. Think about it. Surround yourself with too many young people. Diapers. Whining. Just like snot and weird. Just, ugh. Right? Too many old people. Right? A lot of complaints about soup tubs, their back, fluids, right? Both of these are too bad. So what, what we're going to learn now is how to identify if a country is young or old or in the middle. And we do this with these population pyramids. So we'll see the first one right here is the stage one country. You'll notice everyone is at the bottom, right? You have all these young people. Everyone's down here. This is the vast majority. And you have girls on the right, guys on the left, because girls are always right. There are no countries there today. And the reason there's so many kids here is there's no preventative, 
no preventative prophylactics, no uh, sex education. Just generally, people don't know better. And there's not a lot of old people. You'll notice there's not many old people up here. The reason for that, not a lot of medicine. People live, live hard lives and right, they die earlier. So that's a stage one country. You have an extreme amount of young people, very few old people. In a stage two country, looks like this. Now here's, that's you know kind of what it looks like in a, in a theoretical sense. But here's a real country from 2014, South Sudan. Notice there are a lot of kids in this country. We see down here from, there's 14 and down. We see a large majority of the population, boys and girls. And the reason this country is like that, again, is uh, they don't live for a long time. They, don't have, they have a low life expectancy because of strenuous work. Maybe they have to work with subsistence farming. They have a lack of machinery and tools and not a lot of health care, not a lot of access to medicine, a very high doctor to population ratio. So you can see because of that, you have a lot of kids. It has a ton of population momentum. A stage two country will eventually transition into a stage three country, and Brazil's a good example of this. This one kind of looks like an onion uh, or those Russian domes. Da. And Brazil, we notice, has this rocket shape, and they have a longer life expectancy. You'll notice there are more older people, and all of a sudden we see the younger people starting to wane down here. These lines aren't touching like they were up here. So, Less children, a little more old people. We notice everything's kind of moving towards the center. And you'll notice in stage three and four, a lot of middle-aged people like myself, which I think is awesome. Uh, in a stage three country, though, they'll have more food from mechanization. They've industrialized. They've urbanized. And you'll notice that in a stage four country like Portugal. Start to look like that. You'll notice the children starts tapering off. They keep climbing with more and more elderly people. And we see there's that baby boom. You can watch it go through there. So it's like, just keeps moving through. And in Portugal, they will eventually hit what's known as ZPG or zero population growth because now women are given the right to choose. They are waiting to have careers. They're not just you know going through puberty and having as many kids as possible. They have a lower total fertility rate, somewhere lower than 2.1. And lastly, you have a country like Japan. And here's Japan's um, population pyramid. You'll notice an extreme amount of elderly people. And they actually have negative growth. So Japan is actually declining or decaying. However you want to say decay sounds bad for people, but declining. And it's mostly due to the fact that people wait so long to have kids because they want to be financially ready or they want to live their best life. Hashtag, you know you do. And they miss their childbearing years, their fertility years. And they can't have as many kids. So these one and two, you'll notice a lot of kids, a lot of kids. Stage three, it starts to taper off. Stage four, you have a good bit of balance, right? If only you could hold it at stage four. Uh, it's not growing, it's not dying. And then in stage five, it's actually in a negative rate. So that's how we look at a population pyramid. So remember, it's split. Girls are on the right side, boys are on the left, girls are always right. Um, these are some examples of stage two, three, four, and five countries. And over here, you'll see some of their notes. So how does that fit into this demographic transition model that shows the relation between population and urbanization, industrialization? Well, you came to the right YouTube channel because I'm about to tell you, kids. All right, sit down. So we've kind of gone over it verbally. I just want to go over it one more time. So stage one has low growth. We saw that. Stage two has explosive growth. Stage three has moderate growth. Four has low growth again. And then five has negative growth. And we're going to look at each stage, stage by stage, in order to ascertain this. So I've broken it all like this. So don't look over here, because when you look at all of it, you get overwhelmed. So in stage one, we have three kind of uh, factors we're looking at. The blue line is births. The green line, right, oddly, is death. And then the red line at the bottom is total population. So in a stage one country, there are a lot of deaths and there are a lot of births. And you got to think, oh, why, Mr. White? Why would that be? Well, Billy, the reason there's a lot of births is, think about it, in a stage one country, they're living out in the like jungle. It's tribal. Um, there's no education. Um, just There's going to be a lot of births, right? A lot of hand-holding. Why would there be a lot of deaths? Well, they don't have modern 
farming and agriculture. So because of that, we'll notice that this death line is up very high. And so these fluctuate from time to time based on um, just, you know, maybe there's good seasons, bad seasons, more animals, less animals to hunt. But because these are so close to each other, you have basically a net zero here, which is a bad ISP from the late 90s. But in this case, the low population growth, it's slightly growing. So that's stage one. No countries there today. Stage two, here's what it's looking like. All of a sudden you'll see these lines that were kind of like flirting and giggling. like Ooh, They have now, they are very far away from each other. So you still have an extremely high birth rate in stage two country. But what has fallen rapidly is the death rate. And that's mostly because there's some mechanization. There's a little bit of industrialization here. And there's more food available. And we all know when there's more food available, there's more people. Think about it, right? If you just yell out free pizza, you're going to make some friends, right? People you don't know are going to come find you. So well, why is the blue line so high? Well, in a stage two country, women still don't get educated. That's the biggest reason that will decide where this blue line will go. Women are devalued. Uh, women aren't expected to work. They're just expected to give birth. In a stage two country, a woman could have upwards of... 13 or 14 kids on average in some sub-Saharan and Southeast Asian um, countries. So we see that because of that, right, this high birth rate and this plummeted death rate, we see that the red line will curve sharply up. We get a new slope. Stage three, we'll notice the red line continues and then it starts to soften. And we'll notice the biggest change in stage three is the green line is still kind of where it has been with this death rate. But now all of a sudden the birth rate or this blue line plummets greatly. And the biggest reason here is women gain rights. So in a stage three country, women start to demand all their rights, whether it's equality, uh, pay, um, childbearing, productive rights, educational rights. And when that happens, look out, right? Because you're going to have much lower birth rates. Lower birth rates mixed with already low death rates means that the population will slow down. So you have a you have like the brakes are getting hit in stage three. Towards the end, we can see the red line starting to taper off here. In a stage four country, you'll hit what's known as ZPG towards the end of it, which is zero population growth. And it's a continuation of stage three here because you still have women choosing. You'll notice that these lines have now um, kind of interplayed again. And you have better health care. Uh, you have women focused on their careers and starting families much, much later, maybe 30, 35 and you know, at that point, women aren't, aren't able to have children. And this used to be where the demographic transition model quit with stage four. But recently, some countries have gone into negative growth or decay. And so some uh, geographers and demographers have put in this fifth stage. And the fifth stage um, will state that the country's total population will grow negative because, and at this stage, we'll see that the birth rate will fall below the death rate. Now, you got to remember, it, it'd be nice if no one ever died, but that's the rule. So death can't ever hit down here. Births can get lower and lower because, again, you have people focusing so hard on their, their careers that they don't think about, okay, well, what about posterity or family or children? So all of these together make up what's known as a demographic transition model. So as a country is moving through these different stages, there's different variables playing, right? Maybe there's women getting rights. Maybe there's industrialization. Maybe there's breakthrough in medicine. And all of these changes will make the population shift up or down. So I hope that helped explain this demographic transition model. Because if you look at it, it's one big graph. It's confusing. It's scary. I was going to draw it. And I was like, wait, Mr. White, you can't draw. You're stupid, right? But there are problems with the DTM. It never tells you how long it takes to get anywhere. It does not consider immigration. And if you're a country like China or India that have these severe population problems, it doesn't have a real good answer for that. And also, if there's economic downturn or war, uh, it can't account for it. But this right here is a population pyramid of Japan. Notice it's going through all the stages, and you'll see that those kids born in 1950 are getting older and older. Now they've passed modern times. And you can see it go from a stage two to a stage five country right before your eyes. And just see it exploding in growth, stage two. Now it's going to stage three. It's going to stage four now. 
It's starting to get all those shapes. And if you can just identify the shapes and know some of the causes behind them, that'd be very helpful on the AP exam in May that you're going to get a three, four, or five on, right? Speaking of May, right, this is kind of, that'll be the end of the class, but this can also be used to state how do people generally die in the DTM, right? This is normally a bright pod or YouTube uh, happy topics, but the epidemiological transition each stage has a typical way people die. So in a stage one country, which not any in here, but you could say some tribes that live in some remote places, they'll die of famine or widespread diseases because they don't have the ability to um, mass produce food. In a stage two country, people generally die of widespread diseases like a cholera, not famine though, because they have better food because of the industrial revolution. So that's where you know, you get these larger populations, people start living together, and, right, the, you know, a sickness can break through. In a stage three country, you have what's called degenerative diseases. Now people are dying from their organs physically giving out of gas, right? People aren't going to die of famine or disease anymore. So those are the number one killers in stage one and two. In stage three and four, you have degenerative, and then four, delayed degenerative, because there's just more uh, medicine. You got to think about like the oldest person, you know, they got to take six, seven, eight pills, you know, in those little cases that say Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and they pop them open. They got to take all the pills, right? They take all those pills to delay their degeneration of their organs. If they do not take those pills, right, they wouldn't make it that far. And in stage five, since we don't know that much about it, generally people are going to die of what's known as antibiotic resistance, um, just the diseases start to evolve or change. So how we've always treated them, this, this, this constant method we've always taken, it's now no longer effective and the, there's change occurring. So it's something that we don't quite see. So this is how generally people will die. In my class, I usually make my kids go around and write down each of these stages in you know, eight words. But for you guys, since I can't do anything, I can't make you do anything, um, I'm just going to make you stare at this. And if you memorize this and just stare at it, talk it through, explain it to your dumb little brother or sister, tell your, you know, your great uncle, whoever, tell someone about this. Explain it, draw it, that would help. Um, but this is a pretty exhaustive method of what is happening. But what I want you to do is you know, like and subscribe because in probably about a week, me and my boy Posty are going to write a song, right? Do a little collab, no big. It's called Stable Now. He had a big hit called Better Now. It's okay, right? It's about how he can't get over this like ex-girlfriend. Stable Now is about how we will overcome everything through population changes in the demographic transition model. Hope you understand population pyramids and the DTM. Special shout out to my boy Brian and Jaimez. Always keeping me inspired. <laughs>